Okay, so now I'm going to um, go on to some electrochemical cells and it wants me to show how the standard electric potential of the tin 4, tin 2 plus redox system can be measured. So, in my solution for the tin, I've got to have tin 4 plus aqueous and I also need tin 2 plus aqueous and both of those need to be one mole per decimeter cubed concentration. I haven't got a metal as part of the system, so the metal has got to become platinum. That is connected up to a voltmeter, which again be connected up to platinum, but now this is part of the hydrogen electrode. So I've got H2 at 1 atmosphere there. That would be going through uh, a solution of H plus aqueous, and again of 1 mole per decimeter cubed, like so, um, and then finally you obviously need your salt bridge to just make sure you actually uh, complete the cell. Okay, so I now need to write equations for the three reactions that will uh, take place. Remember, copper, well if you look at these, copper is the most positive, so copper is always, in this, these examples, going to go from left to right, and it will reverse both of these. So when I do it with chromium, I've got to, chromium is going to be reversed, but I need to times this by three. So it will become chromium plus three Cu plus goes to Cu solid plus chromium three plus, like so. If I now do tin, that will go that way and it will reverse tin. Tin's got two electrons, so I need to times that boy by two. So it becomes two Cu plus plus tin two plus goes to tin four plus plus two copper. So I've dealt with the two copper ones now. I've got to decide between these. Well, this one is the most positive, so that's going to go that way. That's going to go that way. But I've got this one I have to times by three. So I get three, six, three. This one I times by two. And so I end up with two chromiums plus three tin four plus goes to three tin two plus uh, plus two chromium three plus, like so. It also goes on to ask me two reasons why these reactions may not actually take place. The two ones are that I don't generally, non-standard conditions um, may be used, so the concentration may be different, temperature could be different, uh, and also um, the rate may be incredibly slow. So although they're feasible, doesn't tell you anything about rate. Okay, I've now gone on to fuel cells. It wants me to write an equation for complete combustion of methanol. Uh, this isn't too bad, obviously you make uh, carbon dioxide and water. Key thing is, is you've got to get this one balanced. I need three over two oxygens and two waters. A lot of people forget that oxygen there. Um, deduce the half equation for the reaction that takes place. So that's at the positive electrode. So that equation, let's write that now. O2 plus 4 H plus plus 4 electrons makes 2 waters, plus another equation have to add up to get to my combustion of methanol, which is there. Okay, so I've got to get that one to work out. This has got oxygen. If you look, there's one oxygen here. Let's go. But there's three over two there. So let's times this equation by one and a half. So that becomes three over two. That becomes six. That becomes six. And that one will become three. So I've got to create an equation which when I add it to that, adds that. So let's see where I've got to go. Hopefully you can see that that and that matches. I've got six H plus here but no H plus there, so I must make six H plus there for that to balance, so it cancels, and six electrons as well to counteract that. 
I've got three waters there, but only two in the final equation. So I must have a water there. So when I add these two together, I only have end up with two waters as a product. And the final thing, of course, I need to have is my methanol. So when I add now these two equations together, I would make that equation there. Of course, I forgot it. I also need some carbon dioxide as well. So now hopefully you'll see, because I've got carbon dioxide there and I um, didn't have any carbon dioxide up here. So I've added the carbon dioxide there. Okay, just to finish off this question, a couple of uh, wordy ones. Two advantages of using vehicles using fuel cells compared with combustion of conventional cells. Uh, well, less CO2, uh, which is obviously uh, good because it reduces the effect of global warming. And also, they're generally more efficient, so you get a greater efficiency. One advantage of using methanol rather than hydrogen. Well, as you know, methanol is a liquid, um, and therefore it's much easier to store and transport around rather than hydrogen, which is a gas, and much harder to um, store. Okay, so we're moving on to question five now, and nice one about entropy. Uh, so we've got uh, four reactions there, and we need to decide uh, the sign, uh, well, the reason for the sign for those changes. So it's told me, uh, we can work through this, right? It's negative. Why is it negative? Well, entropy is decreasing because I've got three moles of gas becoming two moles of gas. B, the sign is positive. Why? Well, I've got a liquid becoming a gas, and a gas is far more disordered than a liquid. So disorder is increasing. But C, it's told me delta S is negative. Why? I've got one and a half moles of gas becoming a liquid. So disorder is decreasing. And finally, D, the sign is positive. Why is that? I've got a solid and a gas becoming two moles of gas. So the number of moles of gas is increasing uh, and therefore disorder is increasing and delta S is positive. Uh, we've got quite a, quite a large calculation now. Um, it wants me to show the entropy change for the decomposition of calcium carbonate is 0.165 kilojoules per kelvin per mole. Okay, so the first thing we do is we know delta S for the reaction is the sum of delta S for the products minus the sum of delta S for the reactants. If the products are gonna be carbon dioxide is 214 and calcium oxide is 40, minus the reactants, which is 89, that comes to 165 joules per mole per Kelvin, or alternatively, 0.165 kilojoules per mole per Kelvin. Show that calcium carbonate is stable at room temperature. So let's calculate delta G, gives free energy. Delta G is delta H minus T delta S. Delta H, they told me, is 178. 25 degrees C is 298 Kelvin. Times it by delta S, 0.165. That would give me 178 minus 49.17, which comes to 129 kilojoules per mole. Uh, therefore, um, delta G is positive, and therefore the reaction isn't feasible. Uh, right, calculate the minimum temperature needed. The minimum temperature is when delta G is equal to zero. So if delta G equals zero, Delta H is equal to T delta S. Alternatively, T is equal to delta H divided by delta S. Delta H is still 178. Delta S, we work out here, is 0.165. And that gives me 1079 Kelvin. Don't forget your units for that one really important.